Hello you guys, it is Jim Warrior, and I am here today to read a little something something about um, <clears throat> one of my spirit guides. Um, I usually just call her family um, or a goddess. Um, and I've talked about her a little bit. I talked about her in my uh, YouTube Pagan Challenge about your matron and patron. Um, which I turned into just like a magical family video. So, um, it's Vivian. Um, that's what I call her. And, uh, she's the Lady of the Lake. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I know a lot of people, um, sometimes have problems with working with spirits who aren't real. <laughs> oh. Um, or spirits that don't seem to have any kind of rooting in in history besides fictional texts um if you're if you don't know who the lady of the lake is then wow i'm shocked but uh, like really but if you don't um the lady of the lake is most of the time just that hand that comes out of the lake in the midst of king arthur and, you know, gives him the sword. Um, gives him the sword. And um, gives him Excalibur. Because the first sword he got broke, which was the sword in the stone. And uh, he had to get a fae-touched sword. So he got um, Excalibur from the Lady of the Lake. And she has a bajillion names. Um, a bajillion. A lot of people call her Nimue or Nimue. Um... Vivian or Viven, Vivain, um, Nivian is one. Uh, there are several. I think I've also read one where her name was something like Francois or something. It was really weird. Um, but there are tons of names given to her because she's such a mysterious figure. There's not a lot that we know about her. And of course, being a female in the Arthurian myths, she is completely contradictory in her behaviors because those myths unfortunately um were taken by priests um some of whom i'm sure had good intentions and wanted to extend the life of the myth by christianizing it and you know keeping it alive um but then some i'm sure just um some of them i'm sure kind of noticed that pe these people the celtic people it's, held on to these myths and didn't let them go long after their conversion to Christianity, which is the common theme of the Celts. So many gods had to be turned into demons or saints just to get them to convert. And the, the, the myths of King Arthur are no different. Um, there's an argument that originally the, um, the Holy Grail, you know, that they seek, which is of course the cup that Christ drank from. Originally, a lot of people argue that it was the cauldron of Saradwin or Caradwin. Um, but anywho, anywho, I'm getting a little off track. Uh, I want to just talk about the Lady of the Lake because the Lady of the Lake um, is a spirit that um, she's just amazing. Like, I don't know how to put it. She's amazing. Um, she is very. Not quite paradoxical, but she is uh, very different from any other spirit that I've ever encountered, even to today. And I've encountered a lot of spirits. I've met quite a few. And she's just very different. She has her really own distinct energy. I, I'm not sure if there's any other gods or goddesses or spirits out there that could be equated with her. Um fully but she's amazing vivian came to me um <clears throat> i'm not quite sure when it, it, because in 2007 let's go back <laughs> i did an initiation where i decided i finally wanted to take paganism seriously because i had been studying it since 2003 yeah 2003 and so i studied for like four years and then 2007 I kind of like, finally was like, I'm going to take this serious. So I did a, a dedication. And uh, 
In the dedication, I called on Morgan Le Fay, who um, I consider to be an aspect or just a face of the Morgan. So I called on Morgan Le Fay uh, as the female kind of like deity for that ritual. And because uh, I just had always loved her myths and felt a connection to her. Like I felt like I was her. So I called on her and uh, after that, the, you know, of course the floodgates opened and uh, the Morgan did what the Morgan does best, which is kind of wreck your life and make you rebuild it. <laughs> um, but then at some point, really shortly, just right after, I remember I really started working with uh, Morgan, uh, she led me to Vivian and um, the contrast between them was so different. Um, Morgan was young, Vivian was old, um, but not like ancient, kind of in between old and young. And I guess that says a lot about Vivian. She's kind of that in between goddess. She's betwixt. Um, because I, I, I very much see her as having red hair, but it's graying. It's in the process of graying on the sides and stuff. Um, her hair is very coarse and very wild. She just barely keeps it tamed back, like. And she's always wearing blue. Like, blue gowns that move unlike Earth gowns. They move like water. And she usually lives in a hut down beside a waterfall where I see her, surrounded by mist. And there's always a glow coming from within. Um, I talked about this, like, some of this that I'm saying exactly in my other video, which I'll link down below, uh, about my magical spiritual family. Um, but yeah, Vivian has taken on the role of like a grandmother to me, or an aunt, um, or even a mother in some cases. She's so warm, and I've never, ever, 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 ever felt anything negative from her, ever. It has only ever been positivity and love and compassion. Um, I've never felt anything else from her, ever. Um, which is saying something, because with other DDs I have. Uh, but I've never felt anything but compassion and love and empathy and sympathy and just all this positivity. But not in an obnoxious way. <laughs> she's very quiet and she's very humble. And... Um, Just amazing. But anyway, I wanted to read, now that I've had that little intro for you, I wanted to read her passage in a book called um, The Encyclopedia of Spirits, which I have talked about before um, and recommended in a video. So, I just wanted to read through the entry on her here. And as I read through it, maybe more stories will pop up from my mind, you know, experiences with her. But I thought I'd read it because it's been so many years since I've read her passage in this. But I love this book. And um, if you're into any kind of like fairies and gods and goddesses and demons and genies and I mean anything, you really should check this book out because it is fantastic. So, The Lady of the Lake, or Origin Arthurian. The Lady of the Lake is the spirit who gave the magical sword Excalibur to Arthur and then reclaimed it after the Battle of Camlan. Uh, the sword in the stone broke. Excalibur was her replacement. See, there you go. She is his spiritual matron. Lady of the Lake is a title. Um, her identity is unclear. Among the spirits described as being the Lady of the Lake are Argante, Morgan Le Fay, Nimue, and Vivian. Her association with swords evokes the Scottish spirit Skatok. Although I have, personally, I have worked with Skatok and they are very different. Skatok is very different, um, in my opinion. But they could definitely be like sisters, in my opinion, as well. Um, compounding the confusion, uh, compounding, <laughs> compounding the confusion in Celtic, oh my gosh. Um, compounding the confusion is that in Celtic cosmology, the reason I stopped and laughed for a second is because if you read the Celtic myths in depth, you get so confused. First of all, their pronunciations versus the spellings. And then with all the contradictory information, I mean, there are so many myths that contradict each other back and back to forth. Kind of like Christianity, I suppose. 
but you're just like, good God, this has been chopped up to death by people, and it's so unfortunate. Um, so anyway, compounding the confusion is that in Celtic cosmology, as in so many others, every body of water, every body of water, you guys, has an indwelling presiding spirit. So every river, every lake, every section of ocean, every puddle, like every brook, every creek, like every body, every fountain, every body of water has a residing spirit just for that water. It's crazy, crazy and maddening, but also kind of beautiful. It makes it very personal. So, um, there are also water spirits who are not tied to any one location, but manifest in virtually any source of living water. See how paradoxical that is? Contradictory. Thus, a very wide variety of little-known mysterious Celtic goddesses, and yeah, they usually are always female, these presiding water spirits. Um, so anyway, there are a wide variety of now little-known mysterious Celtic goddesses who may fit the description of the Lady of the Lake. The title, the title may also refer to her priestesses. Hence, that was weird. I'm burning candles and I just heard like a liquidy sound, like a bubble, you know, like, and I was like, this is candle wax. Anyway, uh, it's very, anyway, <laughs> um, so the title may refer to, uh, may also refer to her priestesses, uh, hence more than one may address as Lady of the Lake, spirit and mortal. And that's a theme that we see in some of the later and more current, um, versions of the myths of King Arthur. We see the Lady of the Lake is a title for priestesses who are um, devoted to the goddess. And Merlin is just a title for priests who are devoted to the god or the goddess. So Merlin and Lady of the Lake are like rotating characters. They're just names. They're positions that you hold in society. And anyone can be the Lady of the Lake and the Merlin if they are a priest or priestess of high-ranking um, authority. And I really like that idea, and I pretty much have just taken it on as truth for myself. Um, brr. um, okay, King Arthur may or may not have died following the Battle of Camlan. Legends describe boats mysteriously appearing to ferry him to the Isle of Avalon, either to heal and recover, or because it is an afterlife realm. The Lady of the Lake may or may not be among the gracious women who come to collect Arthur. However, the island is described as belonging to her. The Lady of the Lake is invoked for protection and by those who love precious, magical swords. She may be petitioned for entrance to Avalon. The Lady of the Lake is the guardian of esoteric secrets and may be invoked for wisdom and guidance. I think that really just sums her up the best. Um... The Lady of the Lake is the guardian of esoteric secrets because she is such a secretive goddess. Um, she doesn't just give her her love and compassion and her information, um, which she has a ton of, away. I talked about my other video, which again, I'll, I will link below, about how she's really a goddess of like witchcraft and sorcery to me. Although the term sorcery seems to fit more. Um, she very much seems like a sorceress, not so much a witch. But that's just me. Um... So, she has just so much inexhaustible knowledge about magical techniques and magical spells and things that I've never read before anywhere, or it'll be nice twists on things that I've heard of. And I'm like, whoa, never heard of that. Um, she is definitely like a mystery tradition in of herself. Uh, I, I kind of call my workings with her, I did it in the other video too, uh, the Vivian Sessions. Because every time I have... Um, experiences with her that definitely seems like sessions, like like informative sessions, like classes almost. Um, she's just so wise and informative and willing to share once you really uh, have been accepted by her. Um, she's amazing. Amazing! Um, but she's definitely a secretive tradition. I, I don't think that she particularly enjoys people sharing the knowledge that she gives to you. Um, because she really likes for you to have to work for it. Um, or not so much to say, I don't want to say be deemed worthy, but she definitely wants to make sure that it's information that you'll actually put to use and not just something that'll go in and out, you know, you want to hear, because then why waste her time? 
Um, so yeah, she, I, I think she's very much tied to sovereignty, like a lot of Celtic goddesses are, like the Morgan. But um, she's amazing and very secretive and mysterious. Um, I've never fully seen her face, but that's pretty much every goddess encounter with me and God. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, the Lady of the Lake appears as a beautiful, mysterious, dignified woman. The Lady of the Lake inspires artists. Many images are available. Alternatively, substitute a Queen of Swords playing card or the Ace of Swords tarot card, which depicts a disembodied hand, albeit a celestial one, prof uh, pro uh, uh, proffering, prof giving you a sword. I can't say that word. The Lady of the Lake rules the Isle of Avalon, but also manifests in lakes. When giving or reclaiming Excalibur, a mysterious hand emerges from the center of the lake and then withdraws within. Um, and because of that, a lot of people do see her as like a mermaid sometimes, or a marrow, or um, some kind of like water entity, like, you know, like a nymph, um, but particularly like a mermaid or a marrow, or sometimes a, um, oh, what are they called? The women who turn into seals. Anywho, I just described it, so sometimes she's seen as that. Um, I don't see her like that usually at all, actually ever. Um, I just see her definitely as a woman who is just very watery and very hermit-like. Um, anywho, I know that's a little random, but uh, I just wanted to share that because, like, again, she's been so important on my journey um, and so powerful and always there, even if I don't see her or talk to her for long periods of time. Like long, I always still feel her there. Like I feel her with me now. Uh, she's always with me. Just this quiet strength. And I love her for it. Um, she doesn't shout at you and demand you to do things. She very much lets you carve your own journey. And then she will offer guidance and assist you as you go on said journey. She doesn't punish you for taking the wrong path or making the wrong choices. She very much is a, uh, a, a a goddess or entity that is very much like a you learn from your own mistakes kind of thing because that's the most powerful way to learn. If I just tell you things and it won't stick with you. So I really like that about her. But anywho, I thought I'd make this share a little bit about Vivian or whatever you see her as, Nimue, whatever. You may see her as completely different from me too. Um, and perhaps because that's because there are multiple, maybe it's like the Morrigan. There, it's an umbrella term for a ton of goddesses. Maybe the Lady of the Lake is an umbrella term for a ton of goddesses that are all the Lady of the Lake. Who knows? But uh, thank you for listening. I really appreciate all the comments that you guys always leave. Um, interaction online is with you guys is so important to me. So thank you so much. Namaste and Peace out, Girl Scouts.